How far away are we actually from full self-driving? Well, you know, if someone really knew, then they would probably know exactly how much to invest in Tesla stock. But in today's video, I wanted to address this question because a lot of people bicker about it back and forth. The last video I did on separating RoboTaxi from full self-driving was really, really interesting to me because I saw a ton of you guys say, Drew, why are you saying RoboTaxis are 10 years away? They're way closer than that. Don't be so pessimistic. Look at the developments Tesla's making. Look at artificial intelligence look at Hardware 3 and how it's able to visualize so much. But at the same time, I also got a ton of people saying, Drew, robotaxis aren't coming out in 10 years. It's probably going to take 30, 40 to 50 years before any of that stuff is actually ready. So this is how I know it's a divided topic. We can't agree on one thing that, no, it's coming in two years, it's coming in 10 years, it's coming in 30 years. That's what interests me about this. So in today's video, I want to just express some of my doubts I have about full self-driving and robotaxi while simultaneously sharing some of my faith that I do have in Tesla, which is why this timeline is not very specific and sort of distorted. Elon Musk did mention on Twitter when someone asked him how soon is feature complete full self-driving coming out, and he just replied, soon, which, you know, soon can be three weeks, soon can be a year, you know, it's not very specific, but we already are in the Elon time, given he said full self-driving feature complete would be ready by the end of 2019. At this point, it isn't, but I mean, it's still hard to know because there's not been legislation passed yet that says that, yeah, you can actually send out software to your cars and make them drive themselves because there's a whole bunch of legal can of worms that gets uncanned as soon as you start allowing that. And it's even more exponentially complicated once you get robo-taxis involved. So because I am biased towards Tesla, I figured we should start with my doubts. Here's some of the reasons that I think full self-driving or level 5 autonomy could be a lot further away than Elon is making it out to be. For one, lots of different weather conditions. So oftentimes when we hear about full self-driving, especially at Tesla Autonomy Day, they showcase how, hey, we don't need LiDAR, you know, we got all the camera sensors necessary. Once you solve the vision problem, you can basically have artificial intelligence train from all of the footage that all of our Teslas are recording and sending back to us and progressively get better with time. They can learn and they can teach each other how to become better drivers. But there's a common issue with Teslas that are currently just trying to do autopilot, not even full level five autonomy yet, which is when it gets really, really snowy, you can have snow cover up those sensors, or sometimes in thick, heavy rain, you can very easily get obstructions on camera sensors where autopilot will suddenly become unavailable because it has low visibility, there's something wrong with the sensors, and while Tesla's hardware does have a distinct advantage, you know, lots of different cameras looking around the car constantly, humans can't do that, obviously, it can analyze all those angles and tell the car exactly what to do to keep the driver safe, human can't do that, we've only got two eyes, but one advantage of our two eyes is they're attached to our head and our neck and that allows us to move and look around in case there are obstructions and since we have this neck we have quite a large field of view and that means that we can turn around we can look around things and we have quite a big room for error because basically the only way to get to a point where we can no longer safely drive the car is if your following distance visibility gets really really low say if it's really foggy or your headlights aren't working or if like a giant piece of wood covered up the entire windshield but that's about it. With these itty bitty camera sensors on the outside of a Tesla, very little can cover those things up and make them useless. As we've already seen with people trying to use autopilot in the snow or during a blizzard, that can cover up the camera sensors, that can cover up the radar, and currently at this time there's no hardware on Tesla vehicles that can clean off those sensors and say, hey, there's something covering this thing up, we need to wipe off the camera sensors so that we can continue seeing correctly. It's not necessarily a super common situation, which is why I've always supported the idea that the rollout of both Full self-driving and robo-taxi will likely be geofenced at first. It will likely not be legal in all states on the same day. It will be legal in certain cities, maybe certain counties under certain conditions. And I think it's even possible that laws may be passed that say, hey, if there's expected to be heavy rain or a storm on a particular day, then you cannot let your robo-taxi drive itself around. Basically, they'll only work in sunny environments because with the idea of robo-taxi, you have to be comfortable with the idea that no one is in the car. I'm totally okay okay with the idea of the car driving itself with me there and hey you know hazards may come up the cameras may start failing or get obstructions in front of them but I can just take over with robo taxi you're gonna have to start passing laws that are capable of saying no one's in the car no one can take over and this is where it becomes a giant legal mess okay what do you do if you opted your car into the robo taxi network it's driving itself around it starts snowing pretty heavily and that snow starts covering up those sensors or leaves or rain or whatever make it so that the car can't see itself no one 
one's inside it, what are you gonna do? Does it just pull off to the side of the road and now the owner has to come and get it? Does it have to wait until conditions improve? And does that also mean that if a robo taxi is out parked somewhere, what if someone runs up to it and just slaps some tape over the camera sensors? Because there are vandals out there, there's tons of trolls on earth, and they're gonna wanna see what happens with a car that's supposed to be able to drive itself suddenly gets blinded by tape. I guess the owner just has to come pick it up somehow because the car can't take that tape off. Again, these are not going to be super common situations, but it's these outliers, it's these rare occurrences that laws have to be built around, that lawyers are gonna have to figure out who becomes liable if the robo-taxi's giving someone a ride and someone gets into an accident with it. Is that now Tesla's responsibility or how is this all going to work? There's also plenty of situations where people cannot understand how even with all these sensors and radar on the Tesla, how are they gonna know when it's safe to turn? You know, we all got those blind spots in those corners where you really have to be careful because there might be a car coming really, really quickly. How well is the fleet and AI gonna train that a car needs to look very, very aggressively on a certain turn and if another car starts coming, it basically just has to floor it in order to not get hit on those really, really blind turns where you can't see either direction very well. That's definitely the most common situation I'm driving around my car and think, man, this is a really tough driving situation. I wonder how AI is gonna be able to get as good as a human with this, if not better. So I have my doubts about that because these cameras, they're all around the car, but they are fixed. Human driver can, you know, look a little bit further and know when to accelerate and when to not accelerate. But with those hazardous conditions and tough blind spots, it's gonna be interesting to see how we start to just let those dangerous situations into the control of artificial intelligence. So I've expressed quite a bit of doubt in this system and there's probably a lot of you big Tesla fans out there that maybe think I'm being unfair. So let me express some of my faith I have in Tesla simultaneously. For one, I think it's very possible that the engineers at Tesla that are working on the autonomous driving features are way ahead of thinking than just the average Joe on the internet like me. They probably have tested lots of different use cases in where the hardware may be limited and they probably want to get to a point where the fleet is training the artificial intelligence well enough that even if certain cameras become inactive or even if certain sensors get covered up, the car is still able to drive itself safely to the point that it can perform better than a human can even in those rare situations. The reason I do have a lot of faith in Tesla is that while they are known for being late to certain things, there's very few things that they just flat out announce and then cancel altogether and say, you know what, we're never going to do that. They're late to things, but if a company like this is promising something, I think that means they're putting a lot of money and a lot of people behind it. And I don't think they would make claims as bold as these if they didn't really see it coming true. Some of you may disagree with me on that, but this is why it's called faith, right? This is why I have confidence that, yeah, okay, the Model 3 wasn't as cheap as they wanted to be. The Model S and X did not exactly hit the release dates that they were originally anticipating, but they did come out. They did eventually get there. And there are no other car companies on the market that are making these types of promises and saying, yeah, full self-driving will be ready by the end of this year or next year. And the reason they're saying that, I mean, yeah, it might help sales a little bit, but the other bigger thing that I think is worth mentioning is Tesla is giving us these deadlines. They're giving us these timelines that they're trying to work within so that we can basically hold them accountable, you know? If they wanted to be vague about it, they could. They could just say full self-driving is, you know, in development. And if someone asked them, hey, when's it officially gonna be ready? They could just say, uh, we don't wanna confirm anything yet. But the reason they're giving themselves deadlines, it gives that pressure to the software and the hardware teams to know, hey, we gotta be making progress. We need to have a deadline, otherwise it's never gonna get done if we just keep doing it in the background saying, eh, we'll figure it out eventually. And that ambitious timeline is really, really exciting to me because it's not about them necessarily re reaching those deadlines. It's just about them pushing themselves. It's about them giving themselves a time that says, hey, we gotta be near complete by this time, or let's try to be done by this time so that they can work on newer and better things. And with the harshness of legislation in the automotive world, I'm sure they're gonna be really, really hard on what the cars have to be capable of doing in order for this type of stuff to be legal. It gets really, really messy once you start selling cars that say, hey, you can technically sit in this thing and plug in the address and it will just drive wherever you want and you don't have to touch the wheel at all? That means if something goes wrong, if a autonomous driving vehicle hits someone else, hits another car, gets into an accident of some kind, we can no longer really blame the driver at that point. If the selling feature is you don't have to interact with the car anymore, you can just sit, you can go to sleep, you can do whatever you want. That's when Tesla starts to become liable as, okay, this car manufacturer is promising something that can't be promised, so Tesla would be responsible in those accidents. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because it means it's in 
Tesla's best interest to make sure the software is ready, to make sure they have the hardware necessary and they can actually promise on cars that drive themselves because if their autonomous driving isn't really very accurate and it ends up causing accidents or crashes or things like that, they can't fall back on you, the driver. They can't say, well, you should have been paying attention because they openly said you don't have to. So that's going to come out of Tesla's pocket for responsibility if things start going wrong with full self-driving. So that means us as the consumer or us as the current day driver, we have the advantage here. There's really not much we can lose in this situation other than they're going to be working hard to get software updates out there. They can make the cars safer. They can make them easier to drive and hopefully get to a point within the next couple years where you don't have to touch anything, whether it's the pedals or the steering wheel, you can just take a nap and let it drive. So that's why I didn't in this video give you a very strict timeline because I believe we're probably going to be in the thick of level three, level four autonomous driving for a long time where it's okay, the car can basically drive itself no problem, but we haven't reached a legal point yet where we're ready to say if the car makes a mistake, it's our fault. So that just means you got to keep your eyes on the road. You can't go to sleep. You can't watch a movie. You just don't have to do anything, which I still think is really, really cool. The idea that it can stop at the traffic lights and stop signs does everything for you, but you just got to watch the road. Okay. I can live with that for a couple more years, but I don't think it will be until maybe 2024 or 2025 that Tesla officially flips that switch on. Okay. We think it's good enough now that we're comfortable saying you don't have to do anything in the car. And that's when the legal battle comes in of, Hey, is it okay if we uh, drive our cars around with no one in them? Is that going to be a problem to the DMV? You bet it is. You bet the government does not move fast when it comes to passing legislation like this, not to mention all of the other governments that Tesla would have to abide by overseas and outside of the United States. So if I had to make a bet on it, my guess is that robo taxi and level five autonomy will first roll out in certain places of California, not the entire United States. And then piece by piece, other states will slowly start to allow it. But I imagine a lot of them to be very arrogant about it and say, no, it's too dangerous. We're not going to allow it in our state. And we'll probably get some YouTubers driving to other states just so that they can activate the feature and see how it works. But either way, it's very, very exciting to watch the rollout. And it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens to the automotive industry in the next 10 years, even if RoboTaxi comes out really quick or takes another decade. I don't care. It's going to be fascinating. Let me know when you guys think full self-driving and RoboTaxi is officially going to start rolling out. I know I'm probably going to be wrong about it, but I'm just excited for the journey. I can't wait to watch the process as we're already seeing so much of it take place now. Thank you guys for watching today's video and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.